slave to priest, Father Augustine Tolton, remembered by Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. Augustine Tolton was born into slavery in Missouri. After his father was killed in the Civil War, his mother escaped her owner and made her way in a rowboat with her three children to the free state of Illinois. In Quincy, Illinois, she and the nine-year-old Augustine found work in a tobacco factory. The Toltons joined St. Boniface Catholic Church, where gospel readings and homilies were spoken in German. Young Augustine retold the scripture stories to other children in both German and English. The pastor was impressed by the boy's intelligence and placed him in the parish school at age 11 during Augustine's three months off work period between tobacco seasons. His enrollment triggered threats, vandalism, and a petition demanding the pastor's transfer, driving Mrs. Tolton to put Augustine in the public school. But he ultimately faced rejection there, too. Hearing of this injustice, Father Peter McGear, the pastor of Quincy's St. Peter's Church, enlisted the support of the Sisters of Notre Dame to ensure Augustine a successful enrollment in their parish school. Augustine later recalled, As long as I was in that school, I was safe. Everyone was kind to me. I learned the alphabet, spelling, reading, arithmetic. In three months, he also learned Latin and became an altar boy. For many years, the young man enjoyed the continued help of a succession of Franciscan priests who tutored him privately. Hearing of his desire to become a priest and finding that no American seminary would accept an African-American, the Franciscans arranged for Augustine to enter a seminary in Rome. They also sent him pocket money throughout his six years of study there. On Easter Sunday, April 1886, with his friend and mentor Giovanni Cardinal Simeone at his side, the newly ordained Father Tolton offered his first Mass in St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. Meanwhile, back in Illinois, Father McGuire was planning a kind of welcome-home celebration that Quincy had never seen before. He organized a delegation of Father Tolton's relatives, friends, and priests. He chartered a special railroad car to meet the incoming train in Springfield so they could accompany Father Tolton home. A large crowd with a brass band met the train in Quincy, cheering as Father Tolton was escorted into a flower-draped carriage drawn by four white horses. Adults and schoolchildren lined the streets and waved as the procession made its way to the church. It seemed as if everyone, white and black, Catholic or not, wanted to be a part of the festivities to congratulate America's first black priest. In a letter to Cardinal Cecchi in Rome, Father Tolton wrote, Everyone received me kindly, especially the Negroes, but also the white people, Germans, Irish, and all others. I celebrated Mass on July 18th in the Church of St. Boniface with more than a thousand whites and 500 color people present. After the Mass, all shouted, Long live the college in Rome! Newspaper coverage of Father Tolton's Masses invariably mentioned his stately demeanor and beautiful singing voice, and his early days as pastor of the new Negro Church of St. Joseph in Quincy showed much promise. Altar servers, evening classes, a girls' choir, and the 80-member Women's Altar Society were racially integrated, as were the worshipers at Mass. Many white people who may have come to see a novelty were awed by Father Tolton's homilies and singing. The white worshipers helped defray the costs of maintaining a parish where poverty, illiteracy, and disrupted families were to take a toll on freed African-American slaves and their families. But this growing congregation also led certain African-American Protestant ministers, as well as a newly appointed pastor of the neighboring German Catholic parish, to view Father Tolton as a competitor for souls. The white priest successfully prevailed upon the bishop to order Father Tolton to dismiss Caucasians from his church and minister to blacks only. Continued harassment led Father Tolton to request a transfer, 
and he was sent to Chicago in 1889 to establish that city's first black Catholic parish. Within the year, his mother, sister, and 19 parishioners moved from Quincy to join him in Chicago. By the time that parish had grown to about 600 members, the foundation was laid for a new church to be named St. Monica's. An African-American architect and contractors were hired, and white Catholics donated liberally. Mother Catherine Drexel was one of the contributors. As a sole priest for so many families, from baptism to burial, good Father Gus, as he became known, worked tirelessly. But his dedication took its toll. Father Tolton collapsed one day on the street during a 105-degree heat wave. He died in 1897 at age 43. His prior request to be buried in Quincy, Illinois, was honored. In 1924, the St. Monica Congregation was consolidated with St. Elizabeth Church to become the center of Chicago's black Roman Catholic community. Mother Drexel's Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament joined the Sisters of Mercy already at St. Elizabeth's School. Today, this parish is served by its pastor, Father Richard Andrus, with a staff of 25 active men and women's clubs and many volunteers. School and preschool enrollment is 255 students, and the Drexel Community Center and the Parish Center provide all the services of a busy congregation. The parish website tells of a landmark event in the spring of 2005. A United States senator from Illinois visited St. Elizabeth's School and spoke to the parents and children. His name was Barack Obama. Let us listen to From Slave to Priest, Father Augustine Tolton, written by Deacon Harold Burke Sivers on Holy Thursday in 2006 as a preface to a new edition of Father Tolton's biography. Father Augustine Tolton's life is a poignant reminder that with God all things are possible. Confronted with a succession of seemingly indomitable challenges, a narrow escape from slavery, his father's death, abject poverty, exclusion from American seminaries, Father Tolton's intense longing for the priesthood and his mother's loving support were the wellsprings from which he drew strength and perseverance. Father Tolton was a beacon of hope to black Catholics who were trying to find a home in the American church in the 19th century. His abiding faith and selfless charity were the instruments through which God's love shone brightly. The Gospel of John's resplendent chorus, I have come not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me, echoed majestically throughout his brief life. Despite the hardships placed upon Father Tolton by a culture firmly rooted in racism, God brought him out of the heart of darkness and used him as an instrument of grace. Despite being the only black priest among an all-white clergy, the gifted Father Tolton was able effectively to convey the richness, beauty, and the truth of the Catholic faith, which penetrated even the hardest hearts. Wherever he went, he was respected and honored. Yet this former slave ordained a Catholic priest also endured years of frustration, humiliation, and rejection in a country boasting openness to religious freedom and tolerance. Once slaves were declared free, they were far from liberated. In Father Tolton's own words, we are only a class, a class of dehumanized, brutalized, depersonalized beings. The nation had failed the freedom test, rooted in its own declaration of independence while the Catholic Church in America failed to live up to the tenets of her own gospel. With the support of several very persistent and undaunted priests, Father Tolton was finally accepted by a Catholic seminary in Rome. He thrived in the Eternal City, where his priestly vocation was nurtured and where his gifts and talents were recognized, prompting even the prefect of the sacred congregation de Propaganda Fide to note what the American church failed to appreciate, and I quote, Father Tolton is a good priest, 
reliable, worthy, and capable, you will discover that he is deeply spiritual and dedicated. For his part, Father Tolton acknowledged the great gift of his Catholic faith and, despite bitter trials and turmoil, remained faithful to the teachings of his church. He was a visionary who saw far beyond race and politics, looking inward into the heart of the church herself. He taught his parishioners that, and again I quote, the Catholic Church deplores a double slavery, that of the mind and that of the body. She endeavors to free us both. She is the Church for our people. The life of Father Tolton is a study in faithful obedience. When the Vatican assigned Father Tolton to serve as a missionary priest in the United States, where he was a slave, an outcast, a hated black, he obeyed in faith, in a spirit of complete humility and generosity. He continually strove to discern and fulfill the will of God under the loving guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. It is precisely duc et altum, into the void, the unknown, that Father Tolton received his mission to be a fisher of men. The greatest legacy of Father Augustine Tolton does not lie in being a pioneer, the first black American priest in the United States. Yes, he was that, but he was so much more. Father Tolton loved and served the Lord with great fervor. He knew that God's love is so immense, its power so limitless, its embrace so tender, that love himself brings forth life. He was a living testimony to God's creative, life-giving work. Father Tolton serves as a role model for those who seek to be configured more perfectly to Christ. He showed us that being configured to Christ means emptying ourselves so that God can fill us. It means exposing the weakest parts of who we are so that God can make us strong. It means dying to ourselves so that we can rise with Christ. I pray that everyone will be inspired by Father Augustine Tolton, who, guided by the Holy Spirit, became a living example of what it means to be fully alive in our Catholic faith.